通訳が必要ですので時間の半分しかありませんので、あの全部話すことはできませんけれども、簡単に短く感じてください。Okay, first of all, I cannot, you know, I need an、uh, interpreter to translate it. So that means I can only speak as half of it as I could. If I speak in Japanese. So I have to quickly、uh, share with my, my story with you today. 今あの先ほど67年前と言いましたけれども、原爆をした67年前、日本はもちろんアメリカと戦争していました、でその年の4月には、もう広島の市内の小学校では、子どもたちを安全なところに置かせるために、集団疎開とか、学校が団体で、お寺とか、田舎のお寺とか、学校に連れて行き、田舎に親戚のある人は親戚に行く。子どもたちは半分ぐらい田舎に行って数が半分ぐらいになってきました。First of all, so you can imagine, okay, please imagine 1945 in Japan, in Hiroshima. So 1945, I was in fifth grade in Hiroshima. And at that time, Japan was in, in war with the United States, right? And the In April, in April in 1945,、uh, meanwhile, you know, April, April was dropped in August 6. But she remembers as a fifth grader, in April of 1945 in Hiroshima, half of since the war, the air raid was so bad. So that half of the、uh, classmates, you know, students from elementary school, were sent from Hiroshima, which is a town, into the、uh, rural area so that all the children could be avoiding all the、uh, horrible you know, air raids and fires and bomb explosions and so forth. So I remember. When I was at school in Hiroshima, half of my classmates were not there anymore because they were sent over to the outside of the city. Right? So that's the situation first of all. で学校に行きましても、勉強はほとんどしませんでした、毎日、行進の練習とか、そして白と赤の旗を両手に持って、遠くの人とお話ができるように、手旗信号とか、その練習をしていまして、ほとんど学校に行っては勉強はありませんでした。And even when we went to school,、um, we didn't study at all. If it's not the time to study, you know, mathematics or you know, Japanese or anything like that, instead、uh, we were learning how to march, you know, march in the、uh, schoolyard, or we were also learning how to use like a little flags, flags, so that you could communicate with people in a distance using. Flags, right? That's what we were learning at school. So, in this way, the children who were in the middle of the school are all in the middle of the school. They are all in the middle of the school. They are all in the middle of the school. They are all in the middle of the school. They are all in the middle of the school. And also,、um, Hiroshima,、uh, Hiroshima had a sort of like a port where a lot of Japanese soldiers、uh, left. It's like a leaving, departing point where a lot of Japanese soldiers would be leaving from Hiroshima to go to, you know,、uh, Asian islands or China or wherever they are going to have a big、uh, combat in the United States. So that all the children were really learning how to send off the soldiers with the Japanese flags, you know, encouraging them for the、uh, good. Uh, brave, uh, how do you call it?、Uh, uh, soldiering and so forth. Right? The school is not the same as the school. The school is not the same as the school. The school is not the same as the school. The school is not the same as the school. And also,、uh, during that time, since The air raids were always you know, happening or, all the time at night and so on. So, any school or any public space, or even sometimes your own 
home's backyard, they prepared the uh, shelter, shelters. That was basically sort of like a cave, you know, dug in the area so that people could run in and uh, evacuate if it's necessary. And in my family, there were my parents and the four girls. And uh, I, I was the young, I am the youngest daughter of the family. で、その日、8月6日は私が小学校、高校に行きました。で、その日学校に行きますと、大変その日暑い日でした。先ほど皆さんにもお伝えしましたけれども、空は真っ青で、雲が全然なくて、暑い日でした。学校の運動場に並び
uh, that was U.S. military uh, airplanes that would come around over Japanese sky, and then also they dropped bombs. And since we have already seen this B-29 rather often in the past, but since never anything was dropped so that we as children, even though looking at the sky, looking at the B-29 US airplanes, we didn't feel there would be anything happen. So looking at them, all the, the airplanes going by, that sort of thing. And uh, um, I remember seeing this like a uh, uh, air cloud that the B-29 was creating in the uh, you know, white cloud in the sky. And I remember feeling like, wow, it's a beautiful sky and beautiful cloud. And then, instantaneously, I felt amazing flash. And that changed everything. And then I was fifth grade. それでもう一度みんなで大騒ぎをして学校の校庭に暴風を走りました私走りました私の背中に熱い砂が今度はすごい勢いで私の背中に降りかかって私はそこに転がったんですそして慌ててその暴風の中に飛び込む前に今度は倒れてきた柳の木の下に来たそして私は。Where I was, uh, I was supposed to be going, right? And I was running, and then a um, big willow tree fell down on me, so I was crushed by the tree. その後、また子供たちはもっと安全なところに行こうとして学校の外にあったトンネル付きの山に掘ってあったそ,のそちらの防空壕にみんな走っていったんがそこはもう近所の人がいっぱいで入ることができなかったその時はもう雲が頭の上まで下がってきて足をくらくせて突然雨が降ってきたそれは後で黒い雨ですけれども。私たちはそして今度は非常に寒くなって私たちは胸が体で寒い寒い人にみんなで語る。And、uh, some of the kids、uh, who were able to run knew that、uh, there are very bigger, more well-built shelter. So some kids were trying to go to the better shelter, which was a little further away from the school. Uh, and some people were running, I can see it. And then all of a sudden, even though it was so hot before, now, you know, it started to feel very, very chilly. And now the rain started to fall. It started to rain, the black rain started to fall. And all of a sudden, you know, filled with this black rain. And then Everybody was shivering because of the、uh, cold. 私の町は中心地から 2.5km 離れていましたが、町中が焼けることはなかったんですね。それで、家族のことを話しますと、父は 1.5km のところに大怪我をしてたんです。And, um, our school was located about probably like four or five miles away from the central part of Hiroshima when the、uh, A1 was dropped. So it wasn't totally 100% destroyed, but my father was working probably like three miles, two, three miles away from the nuclear center. So he barely came home, he came home though, with a horrible injury, but he walked home. すぐ上の雨はあなたたちは何ぐらいだったと思いますね一年生一年生の時もその日病気で休みましたので身の潰れをしました友達はみんなそれほどしないの作業のために
連れて行かれていましたので。And、uh, my, one of my sisters, older sisters, who was an、um, um, uh, eighth grader at that time,、uh, she wasn't feeling well that day. So she didn't go to school. She was sort of like a close to the、uh, center part of Hiroshima. So she stayed home. So she, so she was okay. But most of her classmates, classmates who went to school, Were、uh, terribly、um, affected by the A bomb, and most of her classmates died. So my sister was very, very lucky by accident. Uh, my second oldest sister、uh, was in town, and she came home. Two days after, with horrible burn from her neck all the way down to her back. But she did come back you know, two days later. So that it created the horrible smell in the entire city. And I remember that our schoolyard was used to collect the dead bodies and burn them.
でどこの家でも私の近くではその日から帰ってこない子供を探してお母さんが毎日探しに来ましたそして私のその隣の家では子供たちたちが残されてお母さんが亡くなり大変な皆さん被害が出てきています And、uh, there are many stories like for you. There are a lot of parents looking for missing children all over the world. So everything really changed. ありがとうございました。私たちは自分が本当に生きていてよかった。そういうことを考えてみてください。そしてまた助けてください。で、助けを求められた人たちに助けることができなかったと。あの時どうしてあの人が助けてあげられなかったのか、どうしても助けてあ
some of us felt we really need to create some community so we can share our experience and problems. And that's when we started to form a community of Hibakusha. ひばくしゃが少し集まって自分たちの悩みをお互いに話し合って助け合っていこうよとお話ししましたけれども、それは私たちだけの問題ではないと。私たちのこのことを世界に訴えて、ちゃんとこのようなことがないように私たちはやら
して最後にはがん、肺がんと白血病で。So it was really bad burn, but there was no medica- medicine. So、uh, my mother went to outside of Hiroshima and got some vegetables, like fresh cucumbers. She sliced the cucumber and put it all over the neck and the body to get rid of the、uh, horrible heat and the terrible burn. So that's how she was treated. And、uh, since it was a Unbelievably hot summer, and cucumber will go bad so you know, quickly, so that she was you know, creating like, a terrible smell with, along with her burn. But that's all our family could do for her, just cucumber slices. And,、uh, but you know, thankfully, that our family were able to move even further outside of Hiroshima, where The farmers live, and we, we were with them, and then we got a better、uh, food, and that really gave my sister more strength, so she survived. So, everybody,、um, right now we're going to、um, hear from each one of the students that listen to、uh, different speakers, and we're going to start with Charlene, giving everybody、um, an opportunity to listen to what she may o p e n Well, me and a small group of our students were listening to s h i g e k o and her story, and how she was telling us about how the bomb hit instantly and she woke up and all black. She couldn't see nothing, she couldn't hear nothing. But then it started to fade, and then a lot of people, she could see that they were burnt. And she was burnt herself, but she didn't finish. She was in shock by the things that she seen. And her face was swollen. People, they had nowhere to go, buildings were blown up and everything. People were running to like school auditoriums, like where l e s s e r of the bomb hit, to try to like find help. People that were okay, wasn't affected by the armed bomb, they were helping people out, and a lot of people were dead. Their skin was burnt off, and like she wasn't in contact with her family. Like she had her mother, her brother, her sister, and her father. Like, Everybody was looking for her for days and days. And she was so grateful that her parents and her family didn't go through what she went through because she told me about how she seen h e a r d a lot of stories about how people had to leave their mother, leave their daughter, hold their daughter or hold their, their son while they burnt. And they burnt as well. And trying to save the baby, but the baby's gone. And like, that was heartbreaking for her. And, like, and I think the message that she's trying to send to us is that. It only takes one person, like it doesn't take one person to create this bomb, and it doesn't take one person to stop it. 
we're the next generation. Like we should think about her situation and how we can prevent this from happening to us and other people that we don't know. Let's have an open heart to everything and that realize that these bombs can really destroy everybody over like something that's pointless. Telling me how, like in the schoolyard, they were learning like how to march, and like, like she was telling us how the flies were like they were used to communicate with people, like if anything was ever happened. And she said, like Japan, there was a lot of Japanese soldiers that were learning to go to like to Asia, the Asian island of China. And in the meantime, they was also like preparing shelter in case anything ever happened. So you know, like shelter to run and to evacuate. So she said that. Four girls in her family, and she was the youngest daughter. She said by that time there was not enough food in the schoolyard. She said she could imagine. She still remembers standing there and how hot it was, and how a lot of students used to pass out. And she could remember the principal saying, "Oh, that's, she would be the principal suggested to move into the shade." And then one day she remembers there was a lot of trees. And she remembers that it was a B-29 war airline in the sky, and that was like a, a play from the U.S. military. So, um, <laughs> I took notes, so yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know, what she said she was looking at, excuse me. Yes. Well, she was Hey, please be respectful to your fellow students. Well, go ahead, Bran. She said she was looking an air cloud, and that B-29 was making. Something that, that touched me was how she said a big tree fell on her. And that's, that's crazy. I thought I, I thought I went through a lot of stuff, but a tree fell for falling on you. Can you really imagine that? Try to get out of that. She said, she remembers at that time, there was a lot of kids that were running to a like, to shelter. And then out of nowhere, it just started getting chilly and it started to rain. And everyone was shivering. She said at that time, her sister was in eighth grade and her sister didn't go to school. Which is why she survived. She said a lot of her, her friends in her school, they died. And she was talking about how her father and sister got injured that day. There was no doctor, no medicine, and they couldn't do anything for them. She said a lot, a lot of people died. And they, she said that in school year, they used to collect like, the dead bodies to burn them. She said her next door neighbor, only the children, only the children survived. Her parents, their parents died and they were just stuck there. She said she felt guilt and regret because she couldn't help people who needed help. But she's very thankful to be alive. She said there's a deep sorrow they couldn't forget about. And there was also a lot of discrimination on the rest of the Japanese people. There was fear of radiation because on their, like on their body. And she said that for 12 years they were told not to talk about their experience. And they didn't get any help from the government or any treatment. And she said how a bomb is horrible, and I can imagine. She said her father had like a lot of pieces of glass in his body and stuff like that. And his father also had lung cancer. She said, and her mother got hurt, and he was like, keep coming for me to go away. And she would like slice, she would buy like, keep coming to slice them up and like, put them on her back or her neck or over. And I don't know if she's like a hero to me because that's great. Yes. You know, every day a lot of people go through things, but she's like, I'm not, you gotta just, you know, you gotta just thank God that you're alive. You gotta thank God the fact that, you know, you're not dead. To me, there's nothing more fearful than death. And, you know, I thank you for being here. And you touched me today because this morning, 
I woke up and I had I cried fucking school I had like, things going on and now I'm like here and I'm thinking, you know something? There's actually people who go through way more things that I cannot imagine and that's why I'm happy to be here. I'm happy to be in school, happy to make my education and I can't wait to graduate. Before we're leaving, I just want to ask Rachel and Shigeto to come to the stage. I want to thank you all so much for your listening. And I want you to leave this session with a few things that we discussed. One is what we love about being alive. Because what we love is threatened by nuclear weapons and nuclear power. This is a personal issue to us. And so to hear a personal story is very, very precious. And I want you to also think about how you can use your lives to make a difference. Because I guarantee you, if you involve yourself in anything that's outside of yourself to make our world a better place, you will have an adventure as a life. When we get ourselves just all stuck into our own concerns, which is, concerns are great, but when we reach out outside of ourselves to help others, our lives become an adventure. So I'm sure that you all are on to some great adventures, and I would like to ask our speakers to just give a final word before we close out this session. <laughs> はい、listening to my story and I am so grateful to be able to share with you about the world I have lived and uh, there is so much going on in this world beyond our imagination and uh, I hope what I spoke to you about is something that you could remember and uh, you will be able to tell this story to other people so that we will all remember so that it won't happen again. Thank you so much for being here with us. First of all, I thank you for uh, listening to my story. And uh, I know you people understood everything what I said even my poor broken English. <laughs> but uh, remember, when you get angry, Yay! 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 That's right. Angry down. Don't, don't make other people upset and hit and fight. Try to hit the air. <laughs> okay? And uh, I know you people bring out your heart and I'm so happy to meet you all over here today and thank you so much. Okay, um, Charmaine and Brianna, will you come up here just for one second? Charmaine and Brianna. <laughs> we have a gift for your school. Um, this is 1,000 paper cranes, and um, if you fold 1,000 paper cranes, your wish will come true. So on behalf of all the atomic bomb survivors that have graced us with their presence through Hibakusha Stories, we would like to present Harlem Renaissance High School with Um, something very, very special. These are seeds 
Hang on, check this out, you guys. These are seeds from a tree that survived the bombing of Hiroshima. So you can plant these seeds and grow them, and um, then you will have a part of a peace, nuclear-free legacy growing right here at your school at Harlem Renaissance. <laughs> And so you can fold your own paper cranes. We have a thousand pieces of paper and the directions of how to do it. So let's make wishes. Please follow the instructions down the students. We'd ask that all students downstairs in the cafeteria please make an orderly uh, procession upstairs to their third period classrooms. All students please proceed to the third period classroom and be dismissed from the downstairs.